Hollow Knight Silksong has finally shown some proof of life. But there are still a whole load of games that are MIA. Let's talk about them. Damn, it has been the worst week on the internet uh, as people who look at news. Because oh. it was April Fool's Day on Monday. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's various other reasons it could be bad on the internet, but April Fool's is a pretty bad one, yeah. The one that I thought was actually pretty good was the fact that the Xbox store page went up for Hollow Knight Silk Song. That was not an April Fool's, though. And it wasn't an April Fool's! It's back, baby. Everyone can wipe off that clown makeup. That game exists, because it also got rated in Korea and now has an ESRB rating. You could wipe it off, but I would prepare to put it back on very shortly, because this could be still two years away from being released. It's a good sign because it means it's a little more imminent than never. Mm. So it still exists. It exists. It's not dead, which I don't think anyone thought it was dead. It was just like, are we ever going to hear from this thing again? We've also got a bunch of other games that we are going to reflect on because it is MIA season, which means there's we want to talk about what is out there and what is missing and mm -hmm. potentially what could show up in the near future. Metroid Prime 4. I remember when that got revealed. I, I, <laughs> we were there. I don't. <laughs> that's, I was, that's remember E3. <laughs> oh yeah, it was E3. It was, e I, I wasn't mean, it like a show closer at Nintendo presentation? Well, it showed up in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and then Nintendo were like, sorry for the wait, in 2019. Mm -hmm. And since then, like their earn earnings reports just say TBA on everything. Um, and it's been through the ringer, like most of these games that we're going to talk about. Started off at Bandai Namco, mm -hmm. and then after a while was fully reset mm -hmm. and taken back to Retro Studios mm -hmm. with Nintendo overseeing it, which is how the original Prime series was made. A major factor in this whole story is Switch 2. Yeah, rumor mill saying that it was going to be this year, now it's allegedly pushed into next year. Seems yeah. like a good time to launch something along with a brand new console. Packaging them together as a new new hardware release and also a killer app with mm. Metroid Prime 4 is is a pretty good way to do it. And we know that Nintendo doesn't mind just holding games for way too long mm -hmm. or much longer than you'd expect because Metroid Prime Remastered was apparently done for ages mm -hmm. and they just had it on a shelf for the just right wait. moment. I, I'm not saying that it's done and ready to go, but it could be that they're like, oh, we're just going to wait for the next console at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make sense to put it out on the Switch if there's another one coming out unless they Breath of the Wild it and do both, which yeah, yeah. could be which a possibility. Be. I mean, you can't really throw away that install base. Yeah, I guess like the main through line for this episode is like the expectation. What does that mean? Because Hollow Knight Silk Song now, the expectations are through the roof. Oh, we have to be at like peak overhyped. Yeah, it is, it is like astronomical. It is intergalactic, the, the expectations from that. Let's yeah. go deep down from Capcom. That was announced by Yoshinori Ono. Hasn't he left the company? He's gone. <laughs> he, he went a long time ago. People who don't know Ono, Ono-san was the person tasked with bringing back Street Fighter with Street mm -hmm. Fighter 4 and worked on Street Fighter 5 before departing some way through that development cycle. And what we know about it was like it was set in New York in 2094, which was really weird because mm -hmm. it looked like a fantasy game. And in the most ultimate, like of its era, detailed game is it was free to play. Mm -hmm. Games as a service. Mm -hmm had microtransactions oh god the triforce of shit in the bed <laughs> then it vanished for a really long time after yep. 20 it popped back up in 2014 which i guess isn't a really long yeah. time um and ono was ono every time he appeared people asked him about it and he said I at you that asked time, him about it i asked him a million times i was dming him being like what's going on and he ignored every single dm he just repeatedly kept saying it's not dead mm -hmm. it's just changing um and since then, whatever changes has been happening, we ain't mm. seen them. I would be surprised if they brought this back. Yeah, I think they're kind of just hoping people will forget, forget about, about it. it. But we'll never forget about it. No, we'll always be there. Yeah, deep R down, it uh, will we'll always be there. We'll be emailing you. Build as a quadruple A game, the initiative we're building a reboot of Perfect Dark. Mm. Now, this is around the time when Xbox were gearing up for the launch of Xbox Series and also they just kind of completed their acquisition of a bunch of different studios. It's on like Compulsion Games and whatever got bought. It's like swapped developers a bunch of times. Like certain yeah. Affinity was working on it at one point. Oh yeah, Crystal got embraced. Crystal Crystal, Crystal was the co-developer. Yes. Announced as co-developer and then were embraced. But that has an impact that impacted the development process as far as yeah. Microsoft has let on. They're still working together. Then there was that report recently from IGN's Rebecca did the, did the report on mm -hmm 
the development being very very rocky someone said that the when they showed off that cg announced trailer mm -hmm. that whole thing was way further than yeah. anything they had for the game at that point they didn't even have a solid lockdown gameplay cycle in terms of expectations i think that there's more confidence in it because it's a co-development project between microsoft yeah. um the initiative and crystal it's a good team to do it i think so that is some confidence there i think the expectation is going to be heavily impacted by them coming out and being like this is a quadruple a studio i love how that went from being a, a nonsense term to a loaded term yeah so quickly yeah it's kind of interesting because like it's almost potentially setting itself up to be what the original perfect dark was mm. which was like GoldenEye came out, everyone loved GoldenEye, and then a bunch of like GoldenEye-like games came out. Not a bunch of them, but like enough to be like, oh, GoldenEye is a thing, let's, let's mm. do more of this stuff. And then Perfect Dark showed up as a kind of like a foil to the GoldenEye thing, where it's very different, spy-focused, more gadget-focused. Mm. So they could potentially do that if they pop up again soon and like, oh, we've got a shooter, but it's very different. Well, I mean, speaking of Rare, obviously Rare are not making the Perfect Dark reboot, but they did make the original. Uh, Everwild mm. is another one of theirs. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, it got announced a long time ago. When was it like? Uh, 2019? 2019. They made a big deal about it. They were like, mm. Rare is doing a new IP. I, I would like to see more of that game. I barely know what that thing is. Mo none of us know where it is, yeah. really. It's got like the open world vibe to it. But there were like rumor, uh, rumors, and like there was a report from VGC and from Jeff Grubb that like, it got completely rebooted, Creative Director left, and so it just kind of seems like one another one that's kind of languishing a little bit. Yeah, which is a shame. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about Vaporware, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Uh, yeah, Beyond Good and Evil 2, it's dead. It's dead, Jim. It's is it? Is it actually officially dead? I don't know if it's officially dead, but like you could not convince me that it's happening. They are doing a 20th anniversary remaster of the original game because hmm. they accidentally put it live on Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> and then people were like, oh, oh yeah. this doesn't oh. work because it was an in-development yeah. build. I mean, the context of it being announced as well was is super important. Oh, like the, the they, they were uh, trying to battle a hostile takeover yeah. and they were doing everything they could to try and garner some faith in them mm -hmm. and also like impact shares and mm -hmm. shareholders and that kind of stuff and beyond good and evil was one thing that people were desperate like for so weird to think of it as an as any thing that moves the needle the moment like the the um hostile takeover was behind them mm -hmm. just never saw it again done yeah. see you later um i saw i saw a preview event of it where they showed me pictures and that was it i remember they you showed me pictures E3. on a wall mm -hmm. and were like look at this it's cool, right? Any more questions? Like, no. I've, got, I've got many questions, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Mass Effect is also another one. Which, I, when I went to Google, I type in Mass Effect 4. Mm. It does know what that is. Great. It thinks Andromeda is that. I don't like where SEO I mean, has like, done to I that. I guess... Uh, and then Andromeda? you type in Mass Effect 5, and then it works. And you're like, okay. So people think this is Mass Effect 5, not 4. Which well, they just, well, I mean, is upsetting. Andromeda kind of was a sequel. Like, we are as in it. They were definitely working on Dragon Age... Uh, Dreadwolf, we saw a trailer for that a couple years ago. Yeah. Mass Effect, they finally, I don't know, dude. I th I've said it before, N7 Day is becoming annoying to me as a oh, big yeah. Mass Effect fan. Like the drip feeding of information, like having to wait an hour for three more seconds of a trailer sucks. That's the worst part of this. It's the thing that undermines them repeatedly, mm -hmm. where they're like, oh, we're making a new Mass Effect. And then they release like three seconds and later like some concept art. It's like, you clearly are making a good Mass Effect, or you're making a Mass Effect, mm -hmm. not a good, you're making a Mass Effect, but you're not doing a good job of like communicating that and getting fans excited for it. In fact, you're making it worse. You've announced the game so early mm. that people like us are like, hey, yo, where is it? And everyone is yeah. asking online, where is it? And then they kind of try and do this halfway, give you a little bit of information thing. I would rather they just like have the blog post and say, here are four new screenshots. Clearly. Dragon Age is a priority right now. Mm. And I'm sure there's a separate team working on it, but like, I don't know what state Bioware currently is in. Mm. Can they support like two individual teams focused on it? Or are they in a situation where they need to like go back and forth? It's very unclear. The good thing that we know is they then it's pretty much confirmed as far as I know, they're not making it on an internal engine like Frostbite. I think they, yeah, um, gone back they to have Unreal. gone back to Unreal or they've gone to Unreal after Frostbite, which I think was used for Andromeda. And yeah, but was, Unreal was one, two and three. Yeah. Uh, what a yikes that game was performance wise on Frostbite. Um, and in terms of like expectation after Andromeda, it's kind of hard to be excited about it. I think that it's going to mm -hmm. be expectation for Mass Effect is going to be heavily impacted by the quality of Dragon Age. And I think they know that 
um, th they had that statement where they were like, "It's we're, we're going to restore faith in us. I hope that is the case. But as far as we've had thus far, we've just had like a, you know, trust me, bro, it's going to be good mm. stuff. The statements coming out. Last major update was they announced uh, the writer of Deus Ex and um, Guardians Mary. of the Galaxy, Mary DeMar. She's um, awesome. Oh, yeah. Very, very like, cool. Guardians was I Guardians mean, obviously, well teamwork on that, but like she was narrative director on that one i, I believe. think so yeah and, and that I, is like yeah. encouraging it could be as late as 2029 before we see this game come out because That's they are working <laughs> on dread wolf and apparently according to our friend grub grub grub, grub, um, grub, grub. it's got the same development cycle timeline as dread wolf but, so but, but it's been so long since it's I've been so long it. yeah so it could be 2029 when Ow. honestly i might be in the ground by then who knows Maybe. so if it's good just let me know. <laughs> yeah, my, I'll, uh, I'll yeah. talk to a medium. <laughs> and yeah. I'll be like, yo, damn. Uh, it's good. I know you're dead, but it's good. I guess the, the major through line of this one is like, yes, it's great to see that Silk Song has re-emerged, but also there's been so much that still hasn't. But yeah. it is scarily really not that long until summer game first no not at all and that's kind of like the reason why we're talking about this stuff ubisoft announced their yeah. thing and yeah in in the void right now there's not a lot of games out it's the void it's the void and, and in the void you start to think start thinking about what could be and no in the void i read a book i don't and watch shogun <laughs> shogun's great shogun's good shogun's very good <laughs> we'll be back in a couple weeks because we're both gonna go to the uk for a little bit just to see what's going on hang out see see how how much of it is on fire i'm gonna go visit my family you know I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway so we'll see you in a couple of weeks is there any games that we that have gone missing that you are particularly intrigued by you are following every internet clue let us know in the comments below you can find me on twitter at lucy james games i'm at tomorrow h and we'll see you in a couple weeks